Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 41. If you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter 2.75 example 1 start, click on the link below the video. Hey, last video, video number 40, we had an introduction to power pivot and the data model. But here I just want to show you how to get tables in to power pivot build a few formulas and make a pivot table using Excel 2016. Now as we saw in last video we have these related tables and we need to get them into power pivot data model build relationships and formulas but in order to get data from an Excel workbook into power pivot you have to create an official Excel table so I'm going to click control T for table and enter then I can go up to design and up here in properties and name it and I'm going to use convention F for fact and then sales and enter now I can click on each one of these and here it is power pivot it actually doesn't look much different except for that look at that here they changed the button in 2013 DAX formulas that you dropped into the values area of the pivot table were called calculated fields now in earlier versions they were called measures then they changed it in 2013 to calculated fields and now it's back to measures alright so there it is but this is the button I want to have a single cell so I click add to data model and this is looking the same here. This is the Manage Data Model window. Now, there it is. That little link means it's linked back to that Excel table. It got the table name D Products. We don't need to mess around like we did in the last video, changing column widths or adding number formatting, because it won't have any effect on the final report, the pivot table that we create. All right, I'm going to use Alt-Tab to jump back over. I click in a single cell in the second table and click Add to Data Model. There is our second table. Alt-Tab, click in the fact table, add to data model. Now there's our one, two, three tables. Before we add a calculated column, and I'm going to pull this up, and then our measure or calculated field down in the measure grid, we need to go up to diagram view. And there's our table. Looks slightly different. It's only the colors, right? Here's our fact table. Here's our dimension tables. This is a lookup table. In the fact sales table, if we're going to build a formula that can look up price, there has to be a relationship. And it's product from the lookup table or dimension table. We drag it over and we drag it on top of product in the fact sales table. This is a one-to-many relationship, and that's different. It has a one here and a little asterisk. Remember, the one means there's only one here because the products column or field is the first column in this lookup table, and it has a unique list. Same thing over here. It has a unique list in the first column, sales rep. So we drag it over to the sales rep field. And of course, sales rep, we can have many transactions with the same sales rep. Same with this product over here single product in a unique list but many products in the transaction table alright so we can control s to save it and go back to data view now we can create our calculated column and we're gonna need to get price for each one of the products multiply it times one minus the discount rate and times unit so we double click the top and I'm gonna call this net revenue and this will calculate the revenue for each transaction I click in the top cell equal sign shoots me up to the formula bar and related is the lookup function we use and that's pretty cool that's different than Excel 2013 this drop down didn't appear now we need to look up and get the price so I simply double click or hit tab table name and the square brackets for our field name. I close parentheses, and of course, when I hit Enter, it'll self-populate all the way down, giving me the price. Now, as we talked about last video, that formula is the same all the way down, and it works off of row context. Since the formula is in this row right here, it knows to look up Carlota in the products table and get the price because of the relationship for every row the row context says hey go get Carlota and bring back the price now I click on the top cell and I want to come up and 
edit this formula because we need to take the price times, in parentheses, 1 minus. And remember, when we click on discounts, that doesn't follow our proper convention. Our convention is always going to be we have the actual table name, and I'm going to hit tab, and the field name in square brackets. The only time we use square brackets by themselves without a table name is when we use measures or calculated fields in other formulas. And these are columns, so we use our convention table name and field name. And now we go times, F sales, down, down, down until we get to units and tab, and enter. We need to round this so we can use the round function. Just like it is over in Excel, we come to the end, comma, two, to round to the penny, close parentheses, and enter. So there is our calculated column. And unlike last video, we are not going to add our number for many. If we were to drop that field into a pivot table, yes, it would work, but it would be an implicit calculation. It's not taking advantage of the speed of DAX formulas to calculate on big data. So what do we do? We come down and create an explicit formula. This is going to be called a measure. That's the word they used in 2016. Measure or a calculated field. And what do we do? We type the name of the new measure, and it's going to be total. And as soon as I start typing, it appears up in the formula bar, net revenue. That way, we'll distinguish because both total net revenue and that field net revenue will be in our field list in the pivot table, but we'll know to pull total net revenue. And guess what? We have to type a colon and then an equal sign to get our measure to calculate correctly. Now I type SUM and tab. I can down arrow to F sales net revenue. That is the calculated column. Close parentheses and enter. When I expand the column width, I can see that total right there. I would like to add number formatting. I'm going to click on this. And guess what? Now that I've added English United States dollar sign there, when I drop that into any pivot table, it'll always carry the number formatting with it. Now, we noted last video that the answer to this calculation is $905,702 and some pennies, right? But when we drop this formula, you can see the formula up there. We'll see total net revenue in our field list. When we drop it into the pivot table, this formula will see the filter or criteria we have. That means row, column, filter, or slicer criteria, and it will instantly update. Hey, let's create our pivot table and see it live. When I click Pivot Table from our Manage Data Model window, it jumps over to Excel. I'm going to put this on a new sheet. Click OK. Here's our field list. I can drag and drop from any one of these. Now I'm going to come to D Sales Rep and drag Region. Instantly, I get a unique list. Now I'm going to a second table. And this, of course, is going to work because of relationships. And there's another difference. I love this. It has the f of x to let us know that that is a measure or a calculated field or an explicit function. And we can drag and drop down to values. Look at that number formatting. Guess what? If I create 10 more pivot tables, no more right click number formatting like we had to do in, in standard pivot tables. And I can drag and drop. Notice I took region from sales rep, but now I'm going to go up to product. I'm going to take a different field, drag it down to rows, and look at that. I can drag and drop from what one, two, three different tables. So I have products from the product table, region from the sales rep. And in the F sales, I have my total net revenue formula. And as we mentioned, the beauty of a DAX measure or calculated field or another synonym is explicit formula is that formula right there respects the filter. It sees South and Aspen. It actually will go down and filter the underlying table to get a smaller range to make a calculation on. And that is one of the things that contributes to DAX formulas being able to calculate quickly on big data. I'm going to be sure and come up to Design, Report Layout, Show in Tabular. 
Now in this video, we saw how to do take our tables in Excel, import them using Power Pivot, Add to Data Model. That gave us our data model, one, two, three tables. We, of course, went over to Diagram View, made our relationships. Then in Data View, we created a calculated column, a measure or calculated field, an explicit formula, and then we created a pivot table. Now we want to make sure and double click and call this product region report. Now when we come back in our next video, we'll see a true big data example. We'll have multiple related tables. Big data, we'll bring it into our data model and make a number of different calculated columns and measures and then build some reports. All right, we'll see you next video.